There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of Jhumpa Lahiri's 2003 novel, The Namesake. I just finished reading this a few hours ago and I have thoughts. This was a buddy read with Juan of Bookish Islander and my thoughts are just bursting out of me. I'm not even going to wait to hear Juan's final thoughts on part two of this novel because I just have to... I just have to vent people. I did not like this novel. I was deeply, deeply disappointed in this novel. And this is a novel that is very well loved. So the first thing to say is, if you love this novel, you probably don't want to watch this review. I am not going to tear it to shreds. I am going to talk about its good points and its bad points. But if you love this novel, if you feel a deep personal connection with it, I don't think that it's going to really do much for you to watch me go on because I might get a little ranty in places. You have been warned. I gave this two stars and I didn't hate it, but I almost there was things about it that I was just really deeply disappointed by. I have read Jhumpa Lahiri's collection of short stories, Interpreter of Maladies. I quite liked it. I think it was a four star read and I have read her silly little book on book covers, which was silly, just silly. And uh, now I have read this. So she's a really good writer. I learned a lot about Bengali culture and what it was like to be an immigrant family from Bengal in America in, I don't know what decade it was, the 80s or something, something like that. And I could picture the trappings of what all of that was like and the various Bengali Hindi rituals, weddings and parties and what it was like to start out, start fresh in America. I was never bored at any point. The book held my interest. Unfortunately, that interest was mostly negative because it started out really promisingly. We meet Ashima in her parents' home the day that she has an arranged meeting with the man her parents want to arrange a wedding, a marriage with, and I was captivated by the description of what that was all like. And the only thing that I'm really going to tell you that happens in this book that I'm going to tell you very specifically because it's so early on and it's not really a spoiler is that before she meets the young man who's sitting in the living room with her parents that her parents want her to marry, arrange marriage, she sees his shoes in the porch or whatever it would be and impulsively she slips her feet into them. And it was just this fascinating, vividly described, lovely moment of spontaneity that Jhumpa Lahiri made me, the reader, feel was something that Ashima couldn't believe she had done and showed a side of her character that really intrigued me. Um, there were moments like that strewn throughout the novel. Not many, but there were a few. And what confounded me was how little Jhumpa Lahiri did with those moments. She just let them fade away and never went back to anything. So that's the only one I'm going to talk about specifically. I will vaguely talk about uh, some others. So if you've read the novel, you will know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't read the novel, you won't know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty good at not spoiling things, people. So she does get married to this guy, Ashok. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. And he is already living in America. So she moves to America with him. We get to know stuff about Ashok's past. And I'm not going to tell you anything about that. But he suffered some tragedy as a young man. Just a few years before he married Ashima. And it was directly linked with his love of reading, and in particular, reading his favorite writer, the 19th century Russian writer, Nikolai Gogol. And I'm not going to say any more than that, but it just linked him to Gogol in a very personal way. And I think that was one of the first signs that this novel wasn't going to work for me, because the tragedy is described in great detail, but I was not moved by it. I just felt like I was being kept at a distance from the description of this tragedy that was vivid, but there was just something inner I wasn't getting access to. And that is my main critique of this novel. I just didn't ever get inside the characters. So 
intriguing way that the Gogol story shows up through the life of the son, because the son is named Gogol. I don't think that's a spoiler. And the story is withheld from him for a long time. I will say that there were a couple moments where I was moved, and uh, I was moved at the moment where Ashok does tell his son Gogol why he was named thusly. And that did... <coughs> And it was just on one page, but it did. So give credit where credit's due. I was moved. Lahiri did move me on that page. And then in the final line of the novel, which I will not describe at all to you, how the novel ends. But I just felt ripped off by this story. Like she was jumping around in kind of like a third person omniscient. She would choose which character she would dip into, but she didn't really dip into anybody. The main character is their son, Gogol. I don't, I've just read 300 pages about this guy. I don't know who he is. I don't know anything about him. I know about the surface details of his life. That's my main criticism of this book. I didn't get access. And so it was, to me, it was just a catastrophic misuse of third person omniscient. And I know some people might say it's third person limited, that she limited for this chapter or for this half of a chapter. And she only went into this character, and some people say, no, that's third person, omniscient, subjective, or something. doesn't matter about the terminology. She just didn't seem to know how to really probe into her characters. And I don't mean that I necessarily needed to know everybody's inmost thoughts, or even a couple central characters' inmost thoughts. I didn't really know anybody's inmost thoughts. The parents, Ashima and Ashok, there's one moment where she confronts him, with one sentence, a challenge, and then we just go right on to something else in the very next sentence, the very next paragraph. It never comes up again. What, how did either of them feel after she kind of challenged them with this one demand or this one statement that was really jarring for a Bengali wife to make to her husband? It never comes up again. Like, there's nothing ever came up again. It was just this superficial description of some very interesting stuff that the family members experience, but I just like, who are these people? I was so dissatisfied with it. And it made me think about this novel, which I read a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, and absolutely loved. And that is A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza, which talks about an immigrant family to the United States. In this case, it was a Muslim family from India. So it's not so much the culture, I mean, to a certain degree it's the culture, but, but the immigrant experience and the clash of cultures is portrayed in this novel. But this novel is such a Sean book, and I know not everybody liked this book, but this is one of the best books I read last year, and I loved the visceral sense I got of each character's reality and the part they played in their family drama and the contrast between my experience of these two books couldn't be more stark. I finished the book today and the boy Gogol, he's got a sister Sonia and she didn't even speak. There was a description of a conversation she had with her brother later in the book. It was just a expository couple sentences, and I thought, oh my god, there's the sister. And that was all we got of the sister. Now, I mean, she wasn't a major character, but that is just one more example of how frustrating I found. This read to me like a well-written non-fiction account of what it's like to be an immigrant family from Bengal in America in a certain recent era. I felt like I knew the characters about as well as I would know the characters in a well-written New Yorker article. So that's not saying it's a terrible piece of writing. It's not. But it's a terrible absence of character work. Thanks, Greg, from Supposedly Fun. I stole that phrase from him. I'd never heard of it before. Character work. The character work here is so abysmally superficial that the novel was ruined for me. Now, we all read different books when we read the same book. Maybe you didn't like this, and you would like this. And maybe you don't like the kind of books I like, and maybe you'd like the kind of books I don't like, in which case you should still give Jhumpa Lahiri's The Namesake a try. But if you are more in sync with the way I read and what I respond to, skip it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.